A lot of anglers enjoy travelling to France for a spot of holiday carp fishing, but with so many venues to choose from, where should you go? Well, one venue I can thoroughly recommend is the legendary fishable in Brittany. Situated just an hour's drive from the port of St Marlow, it makes for easy access from Portsmouth and it boasts one of the highest stocks of specimen sized carp on the market, averaging £26 to a late record £64. The lake itself covers an area of 80 acres with 47 swims which are all purposely designed for modern day anglers. It's quite a shallow lake and the fishing is relatively uncomplicated, making it suitable to all levels of experience. On the facilities front, you won't find anywhere in the carp fishing market as clean and tidy as Fishable. It has lakeside accommodation available for small or large groups of anglers, toilets, showers, a bar, a TV room, even a tennis court, as well as numerous local attractions which make it the perfect place to take the other half or the family. Besides the fishing and facilities, another great thing about Fishable is the dining area. This will accommodate both small and large groups and offers the bonus of food packages either in-house or delivered to your swim. I've been visiting Fishable now for almost 30 years and on this occasion I have six nights available to me but before we take a look at how I got on, let's begin by having a walk around the lake to see what it's like. Your first view of the lake is from the dam wall where several swims can be fished from the lakeside apartments. If you prefer to bivy up, there are swims which have a history of producing big fish from both close and long range tactics. The East Bank is where you'll find swims 1 to 12 and all of these are capable of doing good hits of fish. The point area of 5, 6 and 7 is probably the most popular part, mostly down to its social aspect, plus its access to the central part of water where lots of fish hold up. The North Bank has access to lots of water including long range towards the centre of the lake. There's also some great close in features in swims 21, 22 and 23 making this a popular bank for anyone who prefers fishing at shorter range. Back Bay, also known as the West Bank, gives you a great view of the lake and it has produced some incredible catches down the years. It's the shallowest part of Fisherville, but there's some great features to fish to, including a no fishing area, an island and a couple of sets of snags. If you like close quarter fishing, then the Kingfisher Channel will be perfect for you. Here there are several swims enclosed in trees where you can catch a carp from under your rod tips from several bivy swims, or if you prefer, with simple stalking tactics. The lake is mega quiet at the moment so I've had a really good choice of swims because uh, there's only one guy on the north bank and a guy who's in peg 19 so with that, needless to say, you can probably guess which swim I've decided to go for. It is peg 17 which is the exact swim that myself and Rob Hughes won the World Cup Cup in 1996 so but what I will say about this swim is it has massively changed since we were here in 96 because there was no trees at all around here. All these birches and willows that you can see at the moment, they uh, were not here at all. It's absolutely beautiful in here at the moment. And obviously I need that because of the temperatures that we're going to get over the next few days because it is actually going to top out at about 38 degrees. I think that's Friday or Saturday, so it's going to get very, very hot. And that's one of the reasons why I put my bivy down here in this corner, underneath this willow tree. There you go, the old brolly. Bit of a mess at the moment, as it always is when you arrive at a lake. But I'll start tidying that up and get settled in in due course. And there's the rods, not been out very long, and I'll talk you through those in a moment. So let's take a look at the rods then, see what they're doing. Well, I've got a baited area, roughly about 100 metres out, and it's about the size of a tennis court where I've baited heavily with a load of boilies. And I've got the middle rod right amongst that bait that's waiting for that really big greedy carp to come along and then I've got the left hand rod just on the edge of the bait and that's waiting for the shy feeder the one that hangs back a little bit and then the right hand rod is doing something completely different that's waiting for that really really shy loaning carp that likes to hang back from the rest of them and it's well off the baited area fishing all on its own so all three rods are doing something completely different and all I've got to do now is sit back and hope that something happens.
we've done our fight. That's how I remember fishing bill carp always been hard fighting. In she goes, lovely. Lovely. Well, there's the first one, and it's 26 degrees at the moment. Red hot sunshine, and the carp are feeding, so I can't ask for much more than that. Fantastic. Great start to the first day. a bit different anyway <laughs> not sure if it's all in the, the camera shot but yep interesting battle Big old chunk on the first evening. Almost mid 30, which is brilliant because uh, this rod went and this has been my sturgeon rod. And it was just going dark, and all I could hear was this big bosh out there. And I thought, oh no, we've got another sturgeon, but uh, yeah, mid 30. Proper big humpy back as well, so nice start to the evening. <laughs> Oh, lovely. Lovely. Thanks for your help, Ben. Super. Well, good morning. And just on my first night back on Fisherbill, which was rather hectic, couldn't keep the right hand rod in the water and it wouldn't surprise me if it goes any minute now because it's just been going constantly that rod has. At the moment I've only got two rods out there because when I last caught a fish which was about 10 or 15 minutes ago the rig needed changing and I've not got any fresh rigs tied up so I've just reeled in the left hand rod which I've had no bites on so far and I've put that out there so I need to put the left hander back out there but yeah the right hand rod is the one that's off the edge of the baited area and that's really just been fished as a single hook bait and that's been going constantly and last night I had hardly any sleep at all from it and also the, the amount of fish that were out there boshing it was so hectic and the good thing about it is that the stamp of the fish is a lot better than when I used to come here so it just shows what kind of fishing is available here at Fishbowl now there's lots of carp around 28 pounds I've had that nice mid 30 as well yesterday evening which was a, a lovely carp to catch but the average stamp of the fish is, is really, really good. They're all averaging sort of 27, 26 pounds, which is a decent stamp of fish to get on a lake like this because, uh, you know, there's loads of carp in here and you'd, you'd think there'd be a few small ones amongst them, but the smallest one I've had so far is about 12 kilos, which is mid-20, so 
if you're wanting to catch carp over 20 pounds then this is a really really fantastic holiday venue to come to and you know I've got a six night no five nights left now so yeah I hope they're all not like they were last night I'm just not going to get any sleep at all I'll probably age about 15 years but it's really fun it is it's a really nice place to wake up to you can just listen to uh, the wildlife around me it's just absolutely silent from roads and cars and everything so uh, yeah, I'm just going to have a spot of breakfast now and then I'll think about redoing the rods, redoing the rigs and even putting a bit of bait out there as well. So uh, that is one of the things you definitely need at Fishable is lots of bait. So I'm going to get over to the freezer, get myself a few more fresh bags and get it out there and hopefully catch a few more fish as well. Another lovely fishable carp and uh, this one's a bit of a character because it's got a couple of fins missing but it certainly didn't stop it putting up a, a good fight. So let's see if it'll let me hold it. There we go. Brilliant. It's a good tip. Now when you're fishing a lake like this, which has got loads of fish in it and you're getting loads of runs, you obviously get a lot of line twist, especially if you play off the clutch like I do. So what I'm doing every couple of fish is I'm just propping the rod up against the bivy, taking the bail arm off, and then I'm just walking the line. I've taken the rig off here, so I'll just show you that. There's no rig on the end, so I've cut that off. And I'm just walking the line about 50 or so yards down the bank so down to the next door swim and obviously what I'm trying to do is just take all of that twist out the line because line twist it weakens the line it's, and obviously you've got that problem of casting out as well it going around the tip you get that frap as well a lot more which causes you to crack off so uh, just drop the line down on the floor now walk back to the rod and then I'll reel the line in without the rig on the end and as long as I put a little bit of tension on that line it'll take all the twist out of it and that's what I'm trying to do I don't want any twist in the line at all I do prefer playing off the clutch than to do the back wind because I think it's a lot more smoother way of doing it with the back wind you get a lot of jerkiness going on and obviously you can drop the hook out when, when you're doing that so what I'm going to do now is just flip the bail arm over I'll hold the line between my fingers there and I'll just reel it in and it's important to reel the line in through your fingers because that'll take all the twist out of it and uh, obviously that makes for a much smoother cast it also stops you having the problems with the line twisting around the tip end which is frustrating and also it means you're fishing a lot more efficiently so there you go that's all the twist taken out of that line all I've got to do now is rig it back up and it's good to go. I'm not sure you can hear that church bell in the distance, but I don't envy that bloke who's ringing it because it is proper scorcho here today. It's 37 degrees and I've not had the main rods cast out at all today. I've been busy doing lots of filming and just basically just enjoying myself because that is what fishing bell's about. There's no pressure on this venue whatsoever. It's been very, very warm and I've still carried on catching fish today. And in fact, I've actually done a little bit of stalking around the side of the Kingfisher area where there was a lot of fish very close in. And it's definitely worth pointing out here, if you've been looking at what I've been doing in this swim, which is peg 17, I have been fishing at long range. If you're not a long range chucker, then don't let that put you off coming here because it isn't just about long range fishing. It is 80 acres in size, it is a big lake, but there's so many carp in here, you can catch them in all different areas of the water. There's areas around to my right in the uh, bays around there where you can catch them 5, 10, 15, 20 yards out. You don't have to be a long range caster at all, around in that kingfisher area. A lot of these just underneath your rod tip, they come in that close and there's that many fish. You're almost guaranteed never to blank on this venue. But it is very warm at the moment, the conditions have been against us and I've still carried on catching fish. I'm not sure how many I've had, I think about 30 odd carp, something like that. A few 
sturgeon and a few catfish as well but I'm about halfway through now and I've got three nights left so you know let's hope it cools down a little bit because I do think these bigger fish that are in here they could be put off by the weather I'm just waiting for a little bit of a lull I think there's one coming in on Sunday I actually go home on Monday so it might be a little bit too late but even that I'm still enjoying it it's an absolutely fantastic place to to come on holiday and it is a holiday water let's make no bones about that it's a holiday venue where there's lots to do in the local area there's lots of nice things to to visit around here and it really is just a, a nice relaxing place to be Very nice. Lovely. Nice. Nice common. Breaks up all the mirrors. Lovely. Though there's not a great deal of pressure on the lake at the moment, these fish have seen a lot of it over the years, so they can be quite riggy and some of the bites can be quite sensitive. So I've scaled everything down as much as I can. I'm just using 15 pound camo outline straight through to the reel. I've got a lead clip on there. I've got a four ounce lead that's gonna get me the distance that I need out there, which is roughly about 100 meters. And then on the hook link front, normally I'll be using a 25 pound hook link, but today I'm going in with a 15, which is nice and fine. I've taken all of the outer coating off that, so I'm just left with this nice braided hook link. I've got a liner liner on, a size four armor rock snag hook, nice and big. These fish have got big mouths, so I want to make sure I've got a better chance of hooking them. And then on the bait side of things, I'm just using a snowman, which is an 18 mil bug bottom bait, and I've got a PB pop up on the end, nice and bright and yellow. This water's quite murky at the moment, so I want to make sure that, that hook bait stands out and they can always find it. It's not just carp and big sturgeon in here. We've got big cats as well. That's a, a 55 pounder I've just had. So very entertaining on light tackle. Not going to bother having a proper picture of it though. But uh, yeah, nice bit of fun. Well, there you go. You can just see on the end of that snag now, there's a carp taking off the surface. So when anybody tells you that French carp don't take off the surface, well, they are talking utter nonsense because they most definitely do. I've caught carp from several French venues, including 40 pounders from Rainbow Lake off the top. So you know, this is just to prove that uh, here at Fisherbilt, it isn't just about long range casting. It is about catching carp from close quarters, mid range, off the surface, on zigs, off the bottom. You can do everything at this place. And it's not taking me very long to get these carp going either. Probably about 20 minutes or so. There's nothing big down here, so I'm not really sure where I'm going to cast out and, and catch one because I just don't want to, I don't think. But if something big turns up, then of course I'll be putting a rod out there. But that is just to prove to you that with a bit of persistence, even in France where people say they don't take surface baits, they most definitely do. And it also proves that there's an awful lot of carp fishing law that is based on folklore more than actual concrete evidence. There's loads of fish down there now taking, and I've only been doing this for a few minutes as well, so yeah, if I keep going with it, you never know how long they'll be uh, feeding on the top. And normally when you get carp going, it doesn't matter how many fish there are, if there's one fish that starts taking off the surface, another one will come along sooner or later, then another one, and if you can keep that bait going out there, you can get quite a lot of fish feeding off the top, so we'll see how long I can persevere with it because it is very warm at the moment and um, 
there's a lot of ants about as well in this area and I'm getting bitten to pieces so <laughs> we'll see if a big one turns up I'll definitely cast one out and catch one One of the good things about fishing a venue like this is the facilities and I've just made use of them and had myself a nice shave and a shower, I feel a lot cleaner, been for a run as well because the weather has been absolutely brutal whilst I've been out here, 38, 39 degrees on most days, flat calm, awful carp catching conditions but we still have managed to catch some nice fish but today it's my last night and the weather is definitely about to change, you can see a breeze blowing across the lake now, the air temperature's dropped a little bit, there's a bit of moisture in the air, it feels as though there's going to be a storm and in my experience those big fish when the weather's really bad and hot especially those older carp they get very lethargic and it doesn't surprise me that so far I've not yet tapped into the bigger fish that are in this water but tonight you never know with these conditions changing the rods are out and anything can happen so we'll see how we get on Well there you go, that's a fantastic way to end. I've had a brilliant few days fishing, of course some fantastic car, and most of all I've had a nice few days. You can hear there's a storm brewing at the moment, so I'm about to start chucking it down now. I've got to get packed away. I hope it's given you a great insight into a wonderful fishery where you can have a fantastic holiday. Thanks for watching.